Good afternoon, everybody. We are Group A, the members of Supply Chain Management Module. Today, we would like to present our group work on the world's revolutionary aircraft 787, the Dreamliner. I would like to introduce our group members, who are Toby, Kathy, Pameni, Mercy, Muzaffa, and Alan. I would like to make familiar you with what we will be presenting to you briefly. First, I will be talking about the history and background of the 787 Dreamliner. Secondly, our group will talk about competitive environment, factors influencing supply chain configuration, key supply chain issues faced, and the last will be assessment and evaluation of strategic choices of the Dreamliner. And then the background. The back during the late 1990s, Boeing began studying replacement aircraft program as sales of the 767 and Boeing 747 slowed down. The global airline market had been disrupted by the September 11, 2001 attacks and increased petroleum prices uh, made airlines increase the petrol prices and the airlines were become more interested in efficiency than speed. In 2003, Boeing announced his plane name as Boeing 787, the Dreamliner. On April 26, 2004, Japanese airline All Nippon Airways became the launch customer of the Dreamliner and announced 50 aircrafts with deliveries to begin in 2008. The 787 was designed to be the first introduction airline with a fuselage assembled with one-piece composite barrel section instead of the multiple aluminum sheets and some 50,000 fasteners used on existing aircraft. After stiff competition, Boeing announced on December 16, 2003, that the 787 Dreamliner would be assembled on its factory in Everett, Washington. Instead of building complete aircraft from the ground in the traditional manner, final assemb assemb assembly would employ 800 to 1,200 people to join completed sections. This approach would decrease inventory costs and would be uh, leaner. However, in 2007, Boeing announced first three months delay, blaming shortage of the fasteners as well as incomplete software. In October 2007, second three months delay for the first for the first flight and six months delay for the first deliveries was announced due to supply chain problems and lack of documentation from the overseas suppliers. Secondly, we're going to look at Boeing's competitive environment. Porter's Five Forces was the analysis tool that we used to analyze Boeing 787, the Dreamliner's competitive environment. Firstly, we looked at the threats of new entrants, which we decided was low because the aircraft manufacturing industry is currently a duopoly taken over by Boeing and Airbus. The threat of substitute products was also low because although there are other modes of transport available, such as road, railway and ship, the airplane does provide a much faster speed. The third point that we looked at was rivalry within the industry, which we decided was high due to Airbus and Boeing being fiercely competitive. Airbus has a 41% market share and Boeing 59%. The bargaining power of suppliers is low. Boeing has many subcontractors across the world and there are many suppliers to few buyers. The bargaining power of buyers was also low as customers only have two choices being Airbus or Boeing. When we will now look at factors influencing supply chain configuration and Boeing supply chain strategy. Boeing decided to outsource 70% of development and production activities in order to reduce cost and to exploit the suppliers 
expertise. Boeing did this by reducing its direct supply base down to 50 tier 1 suppliers, thereby delegating design and control of plane sections to its suppliers. This allowed Boeing to reduce aircraft assembly time to three days as suppliers would deliver completed plane sections. In order to coordinate and bring together suppliers' efforts, Boeing implemented the use of an information system named Exastar. <coughs> Um, in order to remain innovative and to reduce the weight of planes, Boeing used new materials such as composite fuselage and new technologies. We will now address the outsourcing issues. To begin with, Boeing suppliers use new and unapproved technologies. Boeing lacked foresight in this case and really underestimated the associated associated risk of using new technology. Some of Boeing suppliers used poor quality components as Boeing hadn't set design specifications, therefore suppliers had the free will and control over their own components and design. Boeing suppliers also used different electrical components. Suppliers hadn't communicated with each other when choosing or designing electrical parts and this led to real tragic events such as the fire, battery fire of an aircraft in Boston and the fire on an aircraft in Japan. Allowing supplies to select their own suppliers led to a lack of visibility within the supply chain. Boeing was unaware of its second and third tier suppliers. The lack of visibility. Boeing had employed the use of an information system named Exastar, which was supposed to bring together supplier efforts, allowing suppliers to integrate and collaborate in order to bring to remain on schedule. However, suppliers entered incorrect information onto the integration system. For information available on the system wasn't real-time information, meaning that by the time first tier suppliers and Boeing itself got a hold of the information, the data would have been invalid. Boeing also had difficulties with one supplier, which was a second tier supplier, adopting a different integration system to others. And this second tier supplier then used this system to integrate and collaborate with other second and third tier suppliers, leading to a loss of data and a lack of collaboration. The delay in production time. <clears throat> the accumulation of using the Exostar system incorrectly and also using a different integration system led to suppliers failing to deliver to Boeing on time. Boeing had also incorporated the use of a risk sharing contract. This contract was supposed to be an incentive for suppliers to work together in order to get paid on time as Boeing had stipulated that payment would not be carried out until the first plane had been delivered. However, suppliers took this incentive and saw it as a risk, a financial risk to the supplier. Therefore, some suppliers in fact slowed down production in order not to be delayed in payment. First tier suppliers were also ineffective in managing second tier suppliers. Second tier suppliers would deliver to the first tier, first tier suppliers late and this would then cascade down to Boeing without Boeing being aware of delays beforehand. All right, um, I'll be concluding and uh, we'll be looking at uh, assessing and uh, evaluating strategic choices of Dreamliner. All right, um, this part of the presentation will assess and provide an evaluation of the key issues that Boeing faced in the production of the Dreamliner. The section identifies five key areas Boeing could have done differently in order for the assembly of the 787 to have yielded better results. Perhaps one of the most fundamental issues why Boeing experienced difficulties in the production 
of the 787 is a result of poor leadership and planning from the offset of production. With timing and management being crucial to the success of the project, instead of assembling a team experience in supply chain risk management, Boeing's original team to undertake the project lacked ex expertise in risk management. Had there been a team in place with the proficiency and knowledge of risk management, a number of issues may have been identified and rectified before they became problems and made the production of, of the Dreamliner a smoother experience. The transparency of the supply chain also proved to be a major problem. The uncertainty of precise and timely data about where the supplies were in, supplies were in their development of their parts caused the supply chain to slow. Exostar, the tool that would have enabled Boeing to access the supply chain and control of critical processes, becomes futile if some suppliers do not use the system and their delays cause the whole supply chain to slow. To improve this, Boeing should have put more effort into incentiv incentivizing the use of Exostar, and in addition, Boeing should have ensured that all information from strategic partners and suppliers be notified to them instead of simply waiting for Exostar to provide this information. Thirdly, with some of the dream some of the Dreamliner suppliers originating from Tier 2 or even Tier 3, in some cases, Boeing would have benefited greatly had they validated the, the cap capability of the Tier 1 suppliers. This would have avoided delays in the assembly of the Dreamliner and certainly would have enhanced the coordination of communication between Boeing and its strategic suppliers. A follow-on matter that proved to be an issue was the risk-sharing agreement Boeing held with its suppliers. The contract payment was meant to provide incentives for strategic partners to collaborate and coordinate their development efforts. However, as it were, some strategic partners un were unable to fulfill their requirements of the, of the planning schedule. A delay would occur on the entire development schedule, angering su suppliers that have done their part and in turn providing them with no incentive to produce their products on time. A more aligned contract that would see suppliers rewarded for being on time and penalized for not may prove to have yielded more success. Lastly, there's, there's, also, oh, there's, always risk when in, there's always risk when one is developing a new or innovative product. Had Boeing not been ever so keen on settling setting a date as to when the Dreamline will be completed and taken in orders from customers, disappointment would have been avoided as Boeing were, were unable to fulfill their part of the agreement. A more conservative stance which encouraged open dialogue with customers would have avoided Boeing not delivering the Dreamliner to co customers on time and done less damage to the reputation of the firm. Thank you.